Hello to you newcomers and welcome back my lovely subscribers. This is Big Baby Props and I'm the Big Baby. Welcome to another episode in the epic saga to build my own set of Battlefront 2 clone trooper officer armor from a set of 3D printed parts. Today I'll be showing you guys how I made the pauldron. The imposing piece sat upon my shoulders that indicates some sort of leadership position within the Grand Army of the Republic. In my opinion this piece is really what defines the officer class. It adds a lot to the apparent size of the armor and helps make the trooper wearing it look like an absolute unit. Take a look at this comparison between the armor with and without the pauldron. I hope you guys see what I mean about adding a lot of size to the profile of the trooper. It really bulks it up. All the pieces to this pauldron were 3D printed. I'll provide a link to the source of both the pauldron and neck pad files in the description. For those of you without a 3D printer, I've also put a link to my shop where I sell all the pieces used in the video for you to finish yourself using the steps I'll show you. The first thing I did when I started this piece of armor was to get some reference images. Luckily Battlefront 2 has a nice inspection menu where I could get screenshots of the pauldron and how it should sit on the armor. One thing to take note of is that although it looks amazing in the game, you can see some slight object clipping, meaning some pieces of the pauldron are intersecting and moving through other pieces. This obviously can't happen in real life, so we'll need to remember that even if we perfectly copied the assets from the game, it might not actually work well in reality. Another thing to note is the texture of the pauldron. Take a look and see how it's different from the rest of the armor. It's more textured and even kind of lumpy, kind of rubbery look to it. We're going to have to recreate this in a creative way since the texture isn't in the 3D files. Let's first start with the actual pauldron pieces. Remember what I said about the texture looking bumpy and rubbery? Well, meet the quick and easy solution. Spray on truck bed rubber. One of my first thoughts I had when looking at the pauldron was that it had the texture of a truck bed. Imagine my delight when I found out that they actually made the stuff in a spray can. I was lucky enough to find a can at my local Walmart in the automotive section. Plus, it was under $10, which was pretty nice. This stuff is definitely not your typical rattle can, though. It sprays with a lot more pressure, and you can feel the force behind it as you spray. One of the best parts about this product is its thickness and coats. It's so thick, in fact, we don't need to sand or smooth any of the armor pieces. In fact, I'd advise against it. See, this truck bed spray actually encourages you to sand and scuff up the bed of your truck before you apply it, so it has more grooves and surface area to cling into. I thought what better way to make sure it has a strong hold than to leave the 3D printer lines as they are and let the spray take care of filling them in. When spraying with this stuff, you really want to use short bursts. If you use too long a burst, then the rubber will begin to smooth out. The short bursts provide just enough material to cover the armor, but it maintains the bumpy texture that we're going for. Wait about 20 minutes in between each coat, you really shouldn't need more than two, but you can keep going until you're happy with the texture. Once you are happy with the texture, we can start painting the pauldron. Luckily, the truck bed material takes paint on pretty well, so we'll be able to use the same rattle can we used to make our armor. First, we're going to have to tape up the trim of the pauldron so we get a nice black accent. Use thinner tape, since the black details are pretty thin as well, and use an X-Acto knife to trim away any tape you don't need. Just be careful not to trim too deep or you run the risk of your rubber peeling away. Painting the pauldron is pretty simple. Just do light coats with your choice of color and it should turn out all right. Untaping is always fun, so enjoy the fruits of your labor with a good look at your finished pauldron. Now we can move on to the neck pads. This process proved to be a bit trickier than I imagined. Remember earlier when I mentioned the clipping of the files? Well, this is where it became an issue. Originally, I printed the full neck and back covering, but when I tried it on with the rest of the armor, it was really clunky and didn't allow for much movement at all. It was then I had the idea to cut away some of the shoulder sections. This will mean the neck pads will sit around the shoulder bells, so it will sit lower on my armor. The open shoulder portions will be covered up by the pauldrons anyway, so it shouldn't be a visual problem, plus it gives me the bonus of being able to raise my arms and turn my head. Follow the same pattern for painting as you did the pauldrons. Use the truck bed spray on the unsmoothed pieces, and it should match the pauldron fairly easily. 
Once you have all the pieces finished, it's time to assemble it. I just used some E6000 and some straps to connect all four pieces. The strapping was nice because it kept all the pieces together, but allowed them to move and shift as I walk in the armor. When you have all the pieces connected, congratulations, you've got yourself a nice pauldron worthy of a Battlefront officer. When trying it on without the armor, it sits very well and is easy to take off. When trying it on with the armor, it's a little hard to see with the helmet on, but it sits pretty well. I may have to come up with a Velcro solution to keep it from shifting too much, but for now, I enjoy the mobility. I hope you guys enjoyed this short episode on a specific piece of armor. I have a few more episodes in mind like the comma and the blasters slash holsters, but other than that, we're closing in on the completion of the project, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the final episodes. Again, check out the link in the description to either the 3D printer files or the files available for sale in my shop. I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you all again in the next episode.